kidding me? Oh my god! <laughs> Fun just got scary. It's Marco Pierre White. I'm absolutely terrified. He made Gordon Ramsay cry. I mean, who makes Gordon Ramsay cry? Oh, that's scary. Tracy, it's Marco Pierre White. Oh my god, what? We're walking in and he's still just standing perfectly still and just staring at us like the most serious look you'll ever get. Marco Pierre White is a legend in cookery. He's the youngest guy ever to get three Michelin stars, the uh, first guy to ever give them back. You know, this guy's a big man. He's intimidating. I'm Marco. I'm not that presumptuous that you know who I am. This week is not about me, it's about you. My job is very simple. It's to give you the confidence to bring out what's within you. No matter how intimidating it is. Tell me something about yourself. Marco decides to stop in front of me, of all people, and he just death stares me straight in the eyes. I'm a bobcat operator, and now I'm a master chef to change my life. I like that. Cooking changed my life. This is intense. It's taken to this point for me to combat George's death stare. Marco's like George times a thousand. He just looks straight at you, direct in your eyes. It is scary. I'm sure there's one or two of you who know you can do better. You know it's within you to cook better than you're cooking. Find that inner strength. Learn to multitask. Question everything. Taste, taste, taste. Let's cook some great food. I'm looking forward to spending time with you. I really am. At the end of the week, I'll know each and every one of you. And then I will tell you whether you can cook. And I'll tell you whether you want to cook. Keep it simple. And look at each individual ingredient for what it is not for what you want it to be. If you look at my hand, what do you see? You see a palm. I see four knuckles. We're looking at the same thing, but we see something very different. Never allow the obvious to blind you. Look at it for what it is. Be honest with yourself so hard to hold his gaze and you don't know where to look. I've never responded to anyone like this. I didn't think I had it in me to be so petrified of someone. Amelia. Hello. I watched, I watched when Marco was, was eyeballing you over the mystery box and yeah. um, hey, you looked a bit, a bit lost for word, a bit terrified. Yeah, I am a bit terrified. It's quite a dry pan, isn't it? Yes. How are you going to caramelise your shells to create that bisque flavour which you're seeking to achieve? Because the word bisque is the flavour created by roasting. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. I'm doing a tomato lobster bisque uh, with a lobster medallion and a coriander ravioli. I've poached my lobster, I've got my bisque half done. But all I can feel is Marco's presence just prowling around the benches. Hello, how are you? I just can't concentrate and I'm falling behind. Every time I see him, I just feel this panic rising within me and I, I just forget about what I'm doing. So intimidating. Tracy? Yes. What are you gonna make for this? And I just basically freak out. Um, going to poach the, um... Oh, I can have to speak. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very excited. Breathe. 
I can't breathe. I don't even know if I know how to cook anymore. And I'm trying to calm myself from crying because I, you know, I don't want to cry in front of him. What, why are you intimidated? He's a, he's a lovely bear of a man. He's lovely. <laughs> he's lovely. It smells delicious. It does. Tracy, I've been in your position so many times in my life. Especially when I was younger. Good luck. Thank you. Marco's words are really kind and they've kind of just melted my fears away and uh, I just hope I haven't wasted too much time panicking now. <laughs> So before Marco makes his decision on the top five, he visits each person's bench, looks at their dish, stares intently into everybody's eyes. Everyone is enthralled and it's quite intimidating watching him do that with everybody, knowing that he's on his way up to me. Oh, my heart's pounding while he's coming up to the bench. I'm waiting for him to stare me in the eyes like he has been all morning and he doesn't look at me. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I really want Marco P. White to, to choose me to taste my, my dish, but that lobster, I don't think is cooked at all. You should never hide your tears. I know we've tasted five dishes, but there's just one more dish I would like to taste. Only one. And that dish belongs to... Tracy. Please bring your dish up. Thank you. Hello, Tracy. Hello. How are you feeling? Very overwhelmed. <laughs> It's a lobster broth with a coriander ravioli and a lobster medallion. Before you taste, I fear that my lobster is undercooked. Thank you for your honesty. Right, let's cut this lobster, shall we? I just really want to hold this together, but now's a moment of truth. My heart is sinking to see this raw lobster being cut. It looks, it looks perfect to me. To me. <laughs> Why are you apologising? You know what, I reckon so far, that's the best bit of lobster we've seen in terms it's of It's good, yeah, it's cooked. perfect. Really that is good. very perfect. Really good. I prefer your smile to your tears. Your lobster is perfect without question. I like your bisque. It's got real flavour. I like the tomatoes as well, just softens it. What this dish tells me about you as a person is that you like to create flavours. You're very giving. It shows with what you serve on your plate. Thank you. Thank you. I am so relieved. I've been so intimidated about having Marco in the kitchen, but maybe it just helped me to push on such an amazing, amazing cook. Are you calling it a chowder or a bisque? Bisque. Not chowder? No. Do you think people know what bisque is? Yes. It's a French restaurant. You have a point. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. <laughs> nice flavour as well. Thank you, Marco. My bisque is looking beautiful and I'm just going to leave it sit there and simmer. I'm going to do the mousse now. Yep, perfect. Stop! Look at me. Remember this. Win this, and you're into the finals. And if you want my honest opinion, if you're going to win something in life, 
whether it's a challenge or whether it's stars in the Michelin, you have to push and you have to fight. You just don't get it given to you. So earn it and push and work for it. Yes, Margo. So just remember one thing. Do you want me to push you? Yes, Margo. Do you? It's not personal. We're here to do a job, and that's to feed all those people well. And I want you to walk out of this service feeling proud of yourself and knowing that you gave your best and not your second best. Yes, Margo. But let's do the job. Yes, Margo. Service, service. On order, one salmon. Covers to do. We've only got 60 60 now. Hot plates, not cold plates. Hot plates, not cold plates. In the hot plate, in the hot plate. Come on. Service time has started and we have to get these dishes plated up. How long? How long? Quickly. Marco is questioning how long, how long it is until we are going to have a dish up and. How long? How long? I, I really don't know. Guests are waiting. If you were a guest, would you want to wait or would you want to eat your delicious food? Marco is on top of his game. He's obviously had his wheat beaks this morning. How tough is this? Very tough. But you want it, you see? I you do. want to get to the final, don't you? Yes, I do, Marco. And you may hate me for what I'm doing. No, I But don't. seriously, I want you, like everybody else in this kitchen, to get to the final. There's no favouritism. It's all about the job. Yes, Marco. How's your garnish? How's your garnish? How's that garnish? He is yelling and tapping and pushing and questioning everything you're doing. Come on, make it pretty, serve it hot. Keep it tidy, keep it clean. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Plating up the bisque is taking a little longer than we'd like. Quickly, 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 quickly. Put it more central. Put it more central, just pour it in. There we are. Put it over there so it glazes it, so it doesn't look dry. There you are. Come on, have some confidence. Marco Pierre White. <laughs> Marco, you know, it's I'm terrified. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm cooking for Marco. Oh he's really here, like he's really here. Hello, Charlie. You've actually got your names on your jacket. I'm watching him walk up the line, shaking people's hands, and I'm thinking, oh, please shake mine. Please shake mine, and then it happened. Hello, Matt. It's one of those things you, you're never, ever, ever going to forget. Nicolette, how are you? <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. It's nice. <laughs> you should save those tears for another day. <laughs> <laughs> A nice reaction, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, Marco, welcome back to the Master of Kitchen. You're a regular here. We love having you. These guys are about to face a mystery box. Give them some advice. Give them some of your wisdom. You want some advice? Keep it simple. Don't overwork it. Don't be overambitious. When I was a young man, I was never ambitious. Why? Because I didn't have the confidence to be ambitious. I was motivated by my dreams ruled by my fears, my fears of not being good enough. That's the truth. So the truth is, I'm still that same boy. As I was all those years ago, I'm still motivated by my dreams. I'm still ruled by my fears. My fears of what I put on the plate is not good enough. And if you're gonna win MasterChef Australia 2016, then you have to be honest. Honest with yourself. Honest with what you put on the plate. That is my advice if you want to win. One simple question. Hands up who wants to win. Good luck. Today, I'll be making pepper lemon cream chicken. 
with the flaky paratha and potato crisp. Getting my food tasting by Marco will be one of my dreams. I've always told my husband that I really want to present Marco with the fiercely Indian curry, which has lots of love just made for him. Looks good, Nini. It smells good? Really good. So I hope Marco tastes my dish. I cross my fingers and my toes. The legend is there in front of my eyes. You understand spices very well. My dad too. There's a very gentle warmth. Really clever. Thank you. His personality, it melts you. He's like a coconut that he's hard from outside, but inside he's really a soft and a very beautiful person. You know what, Martha? I love you a lot. I love you too. I was like, oh my god, my love story is complete. <laughs> for an ordinary person like me who gets a chance to cook for Marco, that's a big achievement. And getting it tasted ooh, ooh, ooh. is a double achievement for me. Wow. Like the look of it. What is it? Cream pepper chicken with flaky paratha and potato crisps. This is a very simple dish, but this is quite close to my heart. Why? I always do this dish when I'm not having a good day or something. And it's easy and it's flavorful and it's full of fat. So I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of a dish that you make for yourself when you're not having a great day. That's, that's beautiful. Shall we taste it? Niddy, in 35 years of being in this industry, I've never seen a dish look like that. Tastes so good. It's delicious. The combination of chicken fat and that black pepper, which is beautifully balanced, and that little squeeze of lemon, sensational. The crisps, a little bit of salt. Well done. Thank you. It, it nailed the brief, and the brief was simplicity, tasty, yummy. That's, what more can we say? <laughs> Definitely have to have a run after that, that's for sure. <laughs> Good well stuff. Well done, Cooking for a legend, not everybody gets a chance. Only I can say that. Must have done something too good in life. <laughs> and then Michael Pierre White wants to taste my food. I mean, there's melted ice cream there. But I think I did something right today. Seemed a little surprised that we called you. Yeah. You know, because we picked it because it looks really pretty. And the promise of that caramel ice cream, I think it's a delicious proposition. It's sad that it melted. What have you cooked? Oh, um, Ella's favourite sweet and sour dessert. So it's um, the butterscotch ice cream with the sour lemon curd and lots of little crunchy bits. Did you say Ella's? Yeah. Is that your daughter? Yeah, my five-year-old. So you're starting to think about your children and create desserts for your children? Yeah. Is that what you you're doing? You said to be honest and I'm thinking about my kids today. Okay. That's fair enough. You'll, you'll miss them. Yeah. Always. Shall we taste? So what are these here? They're like a... Chew. Crispy tweel. That is so thin. The meringue, yeah, the buttons? Yes. It's like the lightest 
lemon meringue pie in the world. <laughs> Deconstructed. Really clever. And the butterscotch ice cream is still delicious, even though it's melted. <laughs> the meringue, the lemon, the spun sugar, the little twill biscuits. You've done a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Cecilia. Good Thank job, you. Bye-bye. The last dish we'd like to taste. Belongs to Charlie. Charlie is happy. Come on, Charlie. Gee, Charlie, from elimination last <laughs> week, we've I mean, tasted this week. Um, what's the dish? Uh, it is a honey semi fredo, lemon crumb, candy lemon, and a lemon and honey caramel. I've stood at this block many, many, many times, and I've eaten many desserts in the Master Chef kitchen. This, without question, is the greatest dessert I've ever eaten in Master Chef. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I went to a Michelin starred restaurant today and ate that, I wouldn't question it. I'd more than likely ask for the recipe. It is delicious. The smoothness, the balance of honey and lemon, the crunch, all together in one. Have the confidence to sprinkle it all over. Have that confidence. Allow your fingers to create the design. Don't force it, make it sensational. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I've got nothing to say. Really. Yeah, I've got nothing to say either. What, how can you finish on that? It's amazing. Charlie, how does that feel, man? Really? <laughs> it feels awesome, you know, to be at the bottom of the pack and kind of yeah. questioning everything after that first cook. Um, and then to hear those words from Marco, it's just, I, yeah, honestly, I can't have nothing to say. It's just crazy. Thank you so much. Thank Brilliant you. Stuff, well done. The feeling that I'm feeling today is absolutely on the other end of the spectrum from last week. It's Amazing to go from such a low to such a high. That, is, that has happened, guys. <laughs> Those words will live with me forever and it's something that I'll always be able to fall back on and far out and draw confidence from. How heavy are they? 170. 170, I'm told. That's 181. I'm, I'm only joking. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Red team. Blue team, red team, blue team. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Two hours down, one hour to go. Come on, push. In 35 years of being a chef, I have never seen anybody roast potatoes with white pepper. At this stage, I think everything <laughs> is coming together well, so there's a real vibe now. <laughs> <laughs> happy cooks cook happy food. Let's go, Red Team! <laughs> red Team, Blue Team, come here. Service starts in one minute. And the key is, listen. My job is to be the Pied Piper, and you have to follow me. And remember, the winning team are safe and the losing team go to an elimination. Give it everything you've got. Good luck. Come on. On order, red team, red team. Away with four frauds. Yes, Marco. Yeah. Wow, this is it. This is actually it. Come on, Red, let's go. Blue team, 
four scallops on the pass in 90 seconds. Guys, 30 seconds on those scallops. The restaurant is full, the place is pumping, there's people everywhere. It's starting to get a little bit hectic in the kitchen now. Give me 15 prawns. Marco's so organised in the past, he knows exactly what's going on. Come on, get more prawns on. It's pretty cool to have him taking charge. Do you want me to go easy with you or do you want me to push you? Push up. Shout at me then, say push. Push on Marco! How long for my shots? How long for my prawns? I want my prawns, how long? Oh, my goodness, he's yelling, and he's not yelling a little bit. He's yelling really loud. 12 scallops! Come on, where's my prawns? Where's my prawns? Where's prawns my are coming, Marco! Be the wolf pack. Work as a team. Come on. Make sure they cook, Jimmy. So service has started. The guys are working on the entrees. Now what I've got to do is start my fish. Are we pre-cooking it? Oh, yeah, oh. the oven. Why are you cooking the fish now? Why to get it in the oven, the Marco. Now? To get it in the oven. Well, it'll be overcooked. We haven't even sent a start yet, have we? You don't cook delicate fish before they want to. Marco is terrifying. Harry, follow my instruction and you'll be safe. How long for my scallops? Get your team working with you. The kitchen's frantic. It is chaos. You do the... Can you do the puree? I'll do the scallop. You do the crumb. And I'll do the drizzle. Yes. Yeah. We've got a little round of our puree. We've got our four scallops, our pancetta crumb crumbed over the top, and then a little drizzle of our parsley oil. Are you happy with that? Yep. Service, come here, waiters. Come here. Table two, away you go. Go, go, go. Quickly, quickly. I'm waiting for 10 kingfish. Now it's Harry's moment to shine. That fish has got to get crisped up as quickly as possible and onto that plate. I'm terrified. I'm waiting for 10 kingfish. How long? Come on. Hey, we need more fish on the go. How long? How far away? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. What do you mean? Where's my kingfish? Where's my kingfish? Harry, where's that kingfish? They're not ready, not ready, not yet. Harry is, uh, he's looking a little bit flustered, but you know that you can't send out fish that hasn't been cooked properly. Is that crispy enough? Oh, uh, a little longer. I'm really worried about that fish. I need it now and I can't see any of it. Just push. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six. How long for my 17 kingfish? How long for my 17? 17. How long? Four minutes, Marco. You've got two. Marco screams out 17 more kingfish. Maddie, how much fish do you have? That's it. What? I'm looking in the pan, and we've got about six here, we've got about seven there, and that's it. We don't have any more. That's it. What do you mean, that's it? Are you guys kidding? We've got no more fish. So we're out of fish. What do you mean, we're out of fish? Something's happened, and there's a lot of fish missing. Everyone else is eating. We're starving. Where's the meal? Fish, fish, fish. We're all too scared to tell him that we've run out. He's going to kill me. Marco! Harry! So Marco's calling for more kingfish. Harry, where's Harry? Something's happened and there's a lot of fish missing, which is terrifying. <laughs> Harry, what are you doing? Have you run out of fish, Harry? I know, Marco. I, I counted, there was more than 85, but I have no idea where they are. They just swam off, didn't they? I'm really confused and emotional. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I want four kingfish. I want four kingfish. Where's my kingfish? I'm thinking, where's that coming from? Because we don't have any more fish. Where are you hiding this fish? We haven't got any kingfish left. That's not looking good, is it, for you boys? That's not good. Do you want to go to elimination? When a man like Marco screams that he wants some fish, you better find some fish. What's that? What do I find hiding at the back of the fridge? One last kingfish. Miles runs from the fridge with a whole kingfish. I'm like, yes. Have you found a kingfish? Yeah, we found one. Wow, you're in trouble, aren't you? I've never filleted a fish so fast in my life. Give me tweezers, give me tweezers, quick. Push, guys, come on! How long for my kingfish? Four minutes, Marco. 
four minutes closer to elimination if you don't push. Guys, I need that kingfish now. Where is it? Go, go, go. So they need to be perfect. So I need sauce. I need sauce on that. Where's my fish? Where's my fish? Service, service. I need two more kingfish. And it's all tits on, it's perfect. Ready to go. Oh. Run! Come on, move! 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 Run! Don't walk! Run! Quickly! The first three to my right. The second three behind me. You're the red team. You're the blue team. Do you see the dishes? Yes, yes my friend. That's what you're making. Holy crap. You have to make enough to feed 120 diamonds. Do you see the clock behind me? Oh, shit, it's going. It's already ticking. Three hours until your guests arrive. Get your aprons on and start cooking. Let's waste no more time. Every second counts. Your recipes are in front of you. He is back. Oh, my God. And now we're doing a Marco service challenge. This is like all the hard things of the MasterChef kitchen combined in one with Marco Pierre White. We've pretty much gone smack bam into this horrible combination of service challenge and pressure test and Marco Pia White's running it all. This is like the MasterChef nightmare. Suddenly a shadow appears on my bench and I look up and it's Marco Pia White. How many a portion? Three a portion, 210 in total. It's a lot of rounds. How long do you think it will take you to do 210? <laughs> It's going to take a long time. No, it's not. Let me push. Come on. Faster, faster, faster. You should be doing four prawns a minute. That's ridiculous. What does he think I am? So today our entree is an aromatic golden duck broth with duck breast, a duck and ginger tortellini, and some shiitake mushrooms. I've made pasta a lot. It looks like something that I can achieve but knowing how much work there is to do this for 60 people, it will be a challenge. I need to break down 12 ducks. I know that that's going to take me a lot of time, so I start doing that. Why are you using a veg knife? And why are you shaking? No, uh, use a burning knife. Taking the wishbone out helps, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. No faffing around. Clean. Thanks, ma'am. This is a tough challenge with Marco in the kitchen. We have to do things absolutely perfectly. I'm watching, Matthew. Yes, Marco. We need to make sure that everything that we put up meets his exacting standards. The first thing I need to do is cut down and clean 12 lamb necks, and then they need to go in a pressure cooker for, like, 90 minutes, so I need to get moving. I'm watching. Mm -hmm. right. Don't allow me to slow you down. No problem. There is a lot of butchering going in today. I've got a lot of meat to break down. Very, very time consuming. So I really need to push myself to keep up. For the main, we're making baked snapper with roast tomatoes, zucchini flowers stuffed with a scallop mousse and basil oil. The first thing I get onto is cleaning and filleting the fish. It's the biggest job on my recipe, so I need to get that out of the way. I haven't filleted 35 fish before in a row because I've never had to cook for that many people before, so definitely feeling the pressure. There's a huge amount of prep to do with these fish. I have 35 whole fish to fillet and trim, and then I have to pin bone them. It's a really fiddly and time-consuming job. Hold on, hold on. Marco comes over and I think he can see that I'm pretty slow at it. Are you right-handed? Yes. Head to the left. Marco makes everything look easy. You see, once you open that up, it falls open, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. I can see what he's doing. <laughs> I just can't do it at that speed. I hope I can do this fast enough. This is quite a big job, isn't it? It is a big job. Are you struggling? No. 
Are you sure? Yes. You've got Marco Pierre White kind of circling us like a great white shark, just wanting to make sure that we do everything correctly. You just don't want to put a foot out of line. Stop. Look behind me. The tables are being laid. Oh, God. Two hours to go. Come closer. Don't be scared. Should I tell you in a nutshell? It's one plate every 20 seconds. It's not until Marco says a plate every 20 seconds you begin to understand the enormity of the challenge. But remember, it's not just a plate of food. It's got to be right. There's one little question I'd like to ask all six of you. How hard do you want me to push you? Do you want me to stroke you? Or do you want me to push you? I'll remember that. <laughs> Trust me. Because remember, if you fail, I fail. And I don't like to fail. Yes, Marco. Now push. Let's go. Run. All right. Come on, run. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Marco, how are they? I think they're under pressure, but they're slowly getting there. Haven't seen this kind of intensity since they've started. I think we're going to have a really tough service. Yeah. Because 120 covers about yeah. to descend on you in less than well, this two is hours. The biggest... 120, that's an awful lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At this moment in time, they're working as individuals. But I think as we get closer to the service, they'll start to work as a team. What they've got to do is just dissolve their fear and just do what they do well, and that's cook. That's your last plate of food. Well done, Matthew. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Marco. Blue team, well done. Thank you. Oh, my God. It's a huge relief to get all those plates out. Marco wanted a plate to go out every 20 seconds, and I reckon we came pretty close to that. <laughs> Gather round. Do you want to hear the really good news? Yes, please. Yes, Marco. You got one dish out every 30 seconds. <laughs> there you go. That's amazing. That was an incredibly difficult challenge, but having Marco pushing us was a real motivator. Well done. Well done, please.